So our key concept this time is that populations grow in predictable patterns. So when we look at these um, organisms, these populations in nature, we can study them in predictable ways. Changes in a population size are determined by immigrations, births, emigration, as well as deaths. So the, the size of a population is ever-changing, and that's because of these four factors. So immigration is when organisms move into a population. Births, pretty obvious, new offspring add to the population size. Emigration is where organisms leave the population, move to a new area, etc. And deaths, obviously, subtract from the population size. So let's take a look. Population growth is typically based on available resources. So if an, an area has an abundant amount of resources, there can be growth um, that's what's called exponential growth. And this is rapid population increase. So we see increase doubling, 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 doubling um, over time, and that could go on forever. Now think about it. On Earth, is that possible for populations to grow unlimited? Hmm. Logistic growth um, is the type of growth that we see when a population is facing limited resources. At a certain point in time, those resources in the environment are used up. So they hit what is called the carrying capacity. That carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals in a population that the environment can actually support. Most times, there is a population crash once the um, population has hit that carrying capacity. Um, sometimes we will see a dramatic decline in the size of that population over a very, very short period of time. So here, this graph is showing us um, the number of fish kill events that occurs over time from January to December. It's correlated to the amount of rainfall in inches that occurs in each month. Notice how the month where there's the most fish immediately follows the month in which there's the most rainfall. But then look at what happens. The next month, the population decreases, not as many fish kills. The month immediately following, when the rainfall decreases. So we've got increase in rain, increase in um, fish kills, decrease in rain, decrease in fish kills. Okay, see how those two correlate? Now, there are ecological factors that limit population growth. We call these limiting factors. They keep the size of a population down, so that way they can't grow exponentially and they cannot grow forever. So there are what we call density-dependent limiting factors. And so this is going to be determined by the number of individuals in a given area. If there is a high density of organisms present in a population, that means there are certain factors that are going to limit, <coughs> excuse me, limit their population growth. So density dependent limiting factors um, could be predation, competition, parasitism, and disease. So if you think about it, you get a large number of organisms living in a very, very close area, right? They are more likely to spread parasites and disease. If there are too many organisms in a particular environment, they might compete with each other for available resources, whether it's shelter, whether it's food, whether it's water, doesn't matter. Predation is also another density dependent limiting factor. When we look at the graph right here, we can see um, the correlation between moose and wolf. So the moose are a, um, one of the prey of the wolf. And so when we studied um, a population that's completely isolated on what's called Isle Royale, it's in um, Lake Superior. It's just north. Um, it's just off of the tip of Minnesota, actually. Um, 
we can see that the population of wolves takes a couple of dramatic dips over time. Right here, around, well, before 1970, we'll say that. And then it goes up again, and then it comes back down and hits a real low here, right at the end of the 80s into the 90s. And so look at the correlation between the moose population. So when there's a lot of predators, the moose population tends to stay down. But as soon as the wolves drop down, the number of moose pop up. Then we get a lot of wolves because there's lots of food available. So then the moose population goes down. But then when the wolf population increases again, then we see this huge spike in the moose population. Kind of interesting. Now, the other type of limiting factor is what's called a density-independent limiting factor. And this is a factor that doesn't will affect a population no matter how many organisms are in that population or how close they're actually living together. So density independent limiting factors are things like unusual weather. So if there's a drought, a natural disaster like flooding or if there's a hurricane or a tsunami, and then human activities. Can you think of some human activities that, that we do um, that, that may affect a population? I'm hoping you can. If we go in and clear cut a forest, is that going to affect a population? Will it cause a population to decrease or increase? Hopefully you said decrease. So hopefully you get the idea of what some of the factors are that limit growth. So we're going to be taking a look at ecological data in this section and, um, at, pop and at population growth.